Hey, String Slingers, it's good to be back with you. If you're going to work on guitars, build guitars, or just maintain guitars, you're going to need stuff, and you're going to need some specialized stuff. One of the questions I get a lot is where to buy the things you need. Now, I know what Google is, and I'll bet you do too. And you can do a search, and you find all kinds of sources. And sometimes too many. It gets hard to figure out where to go when you don't know where to start. I can fix that. I'm going to recommend four places for you. Now, these aren't the only four places out there by a long shot, and they're probably not the only four you'll eventually use. But to start, they're pretty good. If you don't know what else to do, start here. Those four places are Stuart McDonald, Luthier's Mercantile, Guitar Fetish, and Alaska Specialty Woods. And before I get too far, I need to make it clear, I don't have any business relationship with these people. I don't get any money from them. They don't know I'm doing this. This is just my own personal opinion, so take it for what it is. So maybe I can walk you through that list of four vendors by showing you some of the stuff I got from them. Now, most of the stuff I buy, I get from Stuart McDonald. Um, they're a very good vendor. They've been around for decades now. Their quality is good. Their uh, shipping is very quick. Their return policies are pretty good. I've never had a real problem having to return things. Um, returning things is rare because the quality is good. And they're unique in that they've got a group of very fine uh, repairmen and uh, guitar builders on staff there. So some of the tools they sell, they've designed. Some of the parts they sell, they've designed. So you know that when you go there, what you're getting is going to work, and you know it's going to last. So here's some of the stuff I got. This is a set of classical tuners for a, a, from Schaller. And you can see in the back here, I'm building a, uh, an archtop classical guitar. And here's the neck for it right here. Those tuners are going to go in this neck. Inside that neck is a Stuart McDonald low-profile double-acting truss rod. So I've got a pile of truss rods here. The blue one I didn't get from Stu McDon Stuart McDonald, but the red ones I did. Here's a uh, fret crowning file I use a lot. Got these from Stu Mac. Here's a new tool they've got called a fret kisser. It's kind of like their uh, tool called a fret rocker. I just love that name. But it's got some diamond abrasive on it, so it makes it work a little better. You can, you can uh, lower high frets with this. Here's one of the goofy tools you need if you're going to work on guitars. This is a notched straight edge and it fits over the, the frets. So I've got long scale and short scale. So this is 25 and a half inch, this is like Fender, and that's 24 and 3 quarters, so that's basically Gibson. Well, that's from Stuart McDonald. Now another one is Luthier's Mercantile. I do business with them a lot as well. And I've got some of the same comments about them. The quality is good. Uh, the shipping seems to be pretty quick. I don't recall ever having to wait for anything. And they do design some of their own stuff. It seems to be designed by other luthiers and they, they produce it or have it produced, but whatever. Um, the, the bottom line is that you get custom-made stuff that's made to their specifications and it's built or designed by people who really know what they're doing. One of my favorite products of theirs is glue. Now, half the guitars in the world are stuck together. Oops. Let's try that again. Are stuck together using tight bond. And this is great stuff. You buy it at the local home store, hardware store, or whatever. It's worked great for decades. Um, this is kind of a version of that. It's, it dries a little harder. And the theory is that uh, it uh, transmits uh, vibrations through the structure a little better. So it's kind of a halfway point between hide glue and uh, the polyvinyl acrylate or the, the uh, wood glue. So it, it acts like wood glue, but it's a little harder. So I, I like it. It works really well. I'm afraid I don't have anything from Guitar Fetish here. I finished an electric a little while ago, and it's gone on to its new home. But Guitar Fetish specializes in electric guitars, mostly, but not exclusively. And they have a lot of finished components. You can buy necks and bodies that are already milled out, and they're already finished if you want. They have some in-house brands. One is called GFS, which is a pickup brand that they run in-house. It seems to be pretty good. I've, I've used some of them, and they seem to be pretty well engineered. Uh, the prices are pretty reasonable, and it, like everybody else, the shipping is pretty good. Um, now, the last one I want to tell you about is called Alaska Specialty Woods. Now, as an acoustic guitar maker, I use a lot of wood. Well, I don't use a lot of wood. I use a lot of pieces of wood. 
in terms of just volume, the numbers of board feet I use are really pretty small. You could probably put more wood in the back of a minivan than I'm going to use for the rest of my life building guitars. But I do care about where it comes from. And I like Alaska Specialty Wood for a couple of reasons. One is that they specialized in salvaged and recovered woods. I read somewhere that something like 95% of the old growth forests in the North America are gone now. We've, we've cut them all down. Well, I don't want somebody going into that last 5% and cutting down some beautiful Sitka spruce just so I can have a guitar. Well, fortunately, I don't need to. The folks at Alaska Specialty Woods go out into the forest and they find trees that have come down. Now, why? Maybe they got old and fell down or they blew down in a storm, but they're down. They're not alive anymore. And so rather than just letting them rot, they cut them up and they salvage them for guitar wood. They also seem to get wood from, I'm not sure what, looks like docks and buildings and things. You know, in Alaska, when you needed to make something, you just went out into the forest and cut some trees down and built it. Well, some of that stuff was Sitka spruce and some of that was pretty good. And so rather than leaving that stuff just to rot, they recover some of that stuff and give it a second life. Here's a top I got from them, and I just love this one. I want to show this to you. Now, this is a piece of AAA Sitka spruce, so this is pretty nice stuff. Look at that. See that giant hole in it? I think that's a marine worm. So this may have been part of a dock or a boat or something. Who knows what it is or was. But see what they've done? They've traced out, and I'm not sure why they traced the same thing on both sides, but it's symmetric, so it doesn't matter. They traced out the body of a guitar to be sure that this part, that's, you know, some animal ate, is not going to affect the, the, the fact that I'm going to make a guitar out of it. So this wood is probably pretty old. It's probably pretty well cured. Maybe it was in the water. I don't know. And rather than being discarded to, to rot or to burn or something, it gets a second life as one of my guitars. I just love this. So they have a very good uh, supply of materials that seems to be renewed pretty regularly. They don't run out of stuff very often. The website's a little basic. It looks like maybe it was done on a budget or something, but that's fine. Their prices are very good, especially if you buy in quantity. And I've never had any shipping problems with them. I buy all my top wood from them now. In fact, the last order I placed, I think if you, at least at the time anyway, if you bought enough stuff, they threw in a t-shirt. So I, I thought that was nice too. So there you have it. It's Stumac, Stuart McDonald, Luthiers Mercantile International, Guitar Fetish, and Alaska Specialty Woods. Those aren't the only ones you'll eventually wind up using, but those are a pretty good place to start. So go out there and build guitars, go out there and fix guitars, and have fun. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.